Good afternoon to you. Mark South of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is Monday, the 23rd day of November 2020. That means it is the last week of the Atlantic hurricane season. All right, we made it, at least most of us. Uh, it's been a rough one, that is for sure, uh, but luckily it's about to come to an end. I'm going to show you a really neat animation as we get started here from Jake Karstens. This is the tweet that he did earlier today. One week until the official end of Atlantic hurricane season. And what he has done is he's put it together in an animation in its entirety, from preseason, Arthur, and Bertha, to the Greek alphabet with four major hurricanes thrown in there. Wow. So this is it from the very beginning. I was out on the Outer Banks for Arthur, which was very short-lived, and yeah, mostly a non-event for the Outer Banks of North Carolina. We get through the month of June and into July, yeah, more mid-latitude action, not much out of the deep tropics, a few systems popping up here and there. But once we got into July, more of those mid-latitude systems, then finally we started to see some activity coming out of the deep tropics. We had Hannah, a hurricane in Texas, then we had Isaias at the end of July into early August, and the MDR, the main development region, trying to get active there with Josephine. But then it really lit up down in this part of the basin, with activity coming through from strong tropical waves and then the very favorable setup that we had in this part of the world from about late August on to now, really. And, you know, we did have a couple of systems, Paulette, that affected Bermuda with a landfall. We had Teddy out there. Teddy's wave action impacted a huge area of the East Coast, but it's that Caribbean Gulf action uh, where we had, of course, Laura, Marco, we had Ada, we had Delta, we had Zeta, and then Iota, the season's more than likely strongest hurricane, making landfall down in Nicaragua uh, recently. Of course, you remember that. A remarkable animation by Jake. Way to go there, buddy. That's my kind of stuff there. I really like that. So if you want to see that, just follow Jake on Twitter, uh, Jake Karstens, in just in terms of who he is. He's a meteorologist uh, and a Florida State Ph.D. candidate. That means he's smart. And uh, he's pretty good at putting these animations together, so give him a follow. You won't regret it. All right, anything happening out there? Well, we saw at the end of Jake's update, his little um, update, his animation it is. I'm, I'm doing an update. He had an animation. And it ends with this, this uh, little tropical disturbance out here. Of course, his graphic looks like that. And you can see the big yellow area. Not to worry, uh, more of just a large area of low pressure generally spread out the energy with it and strong upper level winds are going to inhibit much development should merge with a cold front that's coming off the east coast and then later in the week that system might become separated from the front and it might as they say there develop some subtropical characteristics while it meanders over the atlantic what does subtropical storm mean just real quick it's when that energy is not focused and bundled it's got more hybrid characteristics of uh, mid-latitude systems and tropical systems. And so you just have a much larger wind field and the pressure gradient is not as steep. You don't have um, you know, 975 millibars in the center and then just a few miles out, 985. The pressure is spread out over a larger area, so you have a larger wind field, that larger pressure gradient doing that. Um, and it's just a way to designate, designate these, I guess they could have just called them hybrid storms, but the scientific label is subtropical storm, and we might, might have something to watch in terms of that developing over the next few days. But I doubt it. If we look at the uh, vorticity signature of it right now anyway, it's pretty spread out over a pretty large area. As you can see there, it's not focused and bundled just yet. Here's that trough energy that's coming off of North America. Here's another piece of energy coming down out of the Rockies and out of Canada, the Canadian Rockies. And I want you to notice, too, generally, and I pointed this out uh, Friday in my last update, we are losing the energy down here, at least the bundling of said energy in the deep tropics. The vorticity is shifting more and more concentrated into the higher latitudes. There's a little chunk out here. This is that subtropical potential system that I just showed you. This is a pretty active storm system now affecting parts of New England. Tornado warnings up here for parts of the Cape. Wow, we'll get to that in just a minute. And then another large area of vorticity here. 
some energy coming into California and stuff up over the northeast Atlantic. Bottom line, and my point is, this is the area that we're going to start, we will start watching more and more as this starts to calm down and wane away in the off season. And as such, we will be focusing more and more on lower 48 weather. We're going to look at European weather from time to time and a look ahead towards next year's hurricane season, some of the bigger puzzle pieces to keep an eye on. We will get into all of that starting next week. All right, satellite animation courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com. Again, the biggest thing that's so easy to pick out. Strong upper level winds cutting across a good deal of the Atlantic Basin right now. Uh, I liken this, as I say often, to cotton candy or just plain old cotton getting stretched out. And that's what you see here with these strong upper level winds not going to allow anything to develop very much in the vertical. Vertical development or convection is very limited when you have upper level winds kind of tearing things apart. This is the energy associated with that subtropical wannabe, whatever it might be, down the road. We'll keep an eye on it. Maybe we add a named subtropical storm, and they do name those now, the Hurricane Center does, uh, before all is said and done. Uh, but as it stands now, I think what we are at, 30 named storms overall. And I think I speak for all of us that that is plenty. I think we ended up with an ACE index of about 80, or 180, sorry, it's 100 off. We'll look at all that next week, though, once the season is over. I'll do a longer update, and we'll do a recap, and then a quick peek at what to look for for next year. And hint, hint, this is one of those things that we will watch in the off-season. A week from today, this will be the off-season hurricane outlook and discussion. And we will focus on stuff like this. The uh, INSO, the state of the El Nino Southern Oscillation, which right now... We'll put a big negative sign, meaning that it's in so negative. That's a La Nina. The Atlantic is very warm throughout much much of the MDR. It's kind of more neutral right now through here, but most of the Atlantic is warm. So we'll put a positive over here right now. The Atlantic's favorable. The Pacific not favorable for the Pacific to have much activity. And we saw a down season in the Eastern Pacific overall. But this right here will be the big focal point in the off season, how does the Atlantic behave? How does the Pacific Inso state evolve? And there will be lots of tools that we can keep track of that with over the coming months. But we're not there yet. We still have another week, and then we'll get into off season stuff at least once per week. All right, so a real quick look at the GFS from the 12Z run today. You can see it right there 850 millibars. Uh, about 5,000 feet up, and here's that vorticity that I was showing you. Again, it's all stretched out, not kind of gluing itself together and doing much. Uh, that front comes off the east coast, merges with that system, and you can see how that happens right there and then right there. And then the sort of the trick, if you will, that this system will have to try to play, as the Hurricane Center mentions, is to separate itself, and you can see it happening right there and this is about day three or so, separate itself from that trough energy and maybe bend back down into the, the warmer water temperatures, but it never really does it. You know, it just kind of dissipates probably some strong upper level winds that are gonna, gonna limit any convective processes that go on. And we're out at a week now, so we'll stop there. And oh, interesting, kind of this deep trough here a week out Fittingly, at the end of hurricane season, we'll have to start talking about potentially, maybe, winter weather for parts of the east. Uh, we'll get there. We're not there yet. You know, I don't want to jump right in from hurricanes to winter weather, but maybe we have to. We'll see. At least the weather map today is, for the most part, I won't call it blank, because we don't want to leave out our friends in Colorado. There's a few advisories there, and certainly up in the northeast part of the United States, particularly in the state of Maine. Uh, I saw Jack Sillen tweeting today about some weather and some active weather up his way. Uh, and even Hawaii and, and Alaska have some active weather right now. But overall, for it to be a pretty big travel week, at least today and tomorrow, not much to worry about. We don't see this map here painted all over with lots of reds and oranges and uh, other colors that denote generally uh, bad weather or bad things happening. Um, and just as an example, if we click on Colorado, just anywhere in the map there, 
These are winter weather advisories. There's a high wind watch up here in parts of, I guess that's Wyoming up there to the north. Uh, and that's about it. I mean, nothing that you can't handle out that way. And if we go back to the main map, hey, there's a good pun. That was an accident. And then we click on Maine for the main map, M-A-N-M-A-I-N-E, instead of M-A-I-N for, you get what I was trying to say. Uh, active weather up here with a winter weather advisory, flood advisory. Why? Flooding in Maine? Yeah, some pretty heavy rain up that way. Uh, still some warm water out over the northwest Atlantic. And that's where this starts to matter. See? Very, very warm up here in the Gulf of Maine, which is right there. Relative to average, the water temperatures themselves are not warm. No, you're not going to go jump into the ocean off of Portland and be like, yeah, this is nice. But there's enough moisture and energy feeding this trough, this storm system, that you got some heavy rain up that way. And there's even some flooding concerns. And in the higher elevations where the temperatures are colder, you do have some of these uh, winter weather advisories. That includes caribou and other areas that I'm not quite familiar with yet. I'll get there. We're going to do a lot more with off-season weather this year. I was trying to click on that. I hate it. That's like clickbait. You go to click on that, then you got to go to this. Sandwich RGB. Yeah, whatever that means. Um, but you get the idea. Going back to the master map, a quiet pattern if you have to travel over the next day or so. Um, not too much to worry about. There will be a little bit of storminess across parts of the Tennessee and Mississippi Valleys Tuesday, Wednesday, but nothing in terms of a lot of snow and ice, but just some rainfall, maybe some thunderstorms, so just kind of stay slow uh, going. And I'll show you what this looks like here uh, if you are traveling. So here's the same GFS, again, 12Z, but this is a different map perspective, and we're going to get used to this more and more. It's the lower 48 here. There's the Canadian border. Here's California down to the Mexican border. Just kind of outlining our lower 48 for you, just so you understand what's what and where's where. A pretty good outline of it there. And that's what we will be focusing on more and more in the off season. So as we put this into motion, that storm system exits the northeast up to the Canadian Maritimes, Atlantic Canada. And then another storm system tries to take shape there by Wednesday. And again, if you are traveling that last day before Thanksgiving itself, all those greens in there, we back it up. There's some yellows there, meaning some thunderstorm activity, maybe moving through Missouri, southern Illinois, Indiana, maybe Kentucky, but nothing that we can't handle. If you just use common sense, slow down if you're traveling on the interstates and the back roads, the secondary roads, and you'll be fine. 96 hours and then out to 120, and then finally out at about a week. Some signs there, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll check this out more in the coming days. I'll be doing this outlook every day this week. But you notice just, just a little hint, um, troughing right there. And then your surface low trying to develop here. This represents cold air coming in. This is that warm sector. Maybe, just maybe, as we get into the first part of December, some interesting weather to watch for for parts of the east coast of the United States. <sighs> Why not? Why can't it just stay calm? I guess too much to ask. All right, that is it from me for today. Lots of exciting things that we're working on for the off season. Of course, you always can follow along Twitter at Hurricane Track. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube, and you can become a crowdfunding partner through Patreon. The link is always in the description of these videos. But most important of all, I appreciate the fact that you took some time out of your day to listen to me. It's awesome to have you on your side of your device of choice. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com, my website. I'll talk to you again some more tomorrow.